buy, sell, and store crypto on a trusted platform. Crypto starts with Bitvavo. Hey, hello everyone. I hope this fits. We had some technical challenge, but uh, let's go. Um, yeah, this is a lightning talk, so I'll be very fast. And I, I spend a lot of time, much more than the talk, thinking about what can I say in this short time that will help you at least to go out from here that feels like, okay, I learned something or maybe he made me think about something. So my background is uh, distributed computing. So I work with scaling, scaling companies usually uh, and helping systems to, uh, to really scale. Uh, big data, I worked a lot. Uh, streaming platforms, it's my, uh, it's my um, bread, and birth, bread and birth for the past like seven years. And currently, uh, I live in the Netherlands for seven years from Brazil. And I write uh, technical blog posts. Currently, this one, I had another three or four different places that I, where I used to write. But you can find my most recent articles there, usually talking about Kafka, about uh, uh, Kubernetes, mostly backend in my case. Uh, I work for Bitvavo. It's a crypto, biggest crypto uh, exchange in the Netherlands. So if you uh, are into crypto or want to be into crypto, it's as easy as, a, as clicking a button like you see there. And uh, that's, that's the goal from the company. It's really to bring uh, the opportunity to, to trade crypto for uh, everyone. And that's what we're doing. That's our mission. Uh, so what I'm going to try to talk in this short time, I'm going to talk a bit about this world where we live that we use Many of us, I'm sure a lot of you use Kafka to share events between systems. And this is a requirement, of course, because we, in the current world that we, we go global with our platforms and your applications, we cannot be reliant on a database. So we really need to separate our services, right? And I'm going to talk a bit about a few challenges, the common mistakes and patterns that we use, and solutions for that. So this is a normal services architecture. You can call it microservices. It really depends where you are, how you do it. It doesn't matter. The important thing here is that you have multiple databases, multiple data sources. You are integrating things through Kafka. And that's a common pattern more and more. I bet many of you have this. And a common way to do it, and I've seen this especially on the TypeScript, JavaScript world, is that you send events using JSON. That's very easy because everything is JSON, but the problem is you don't have a really a contract, right? If you send uh, events to a JSON, the producer is the sending side might send something that's actually broken or other producers might send it uh, and uh, the consumer starts processing that and breaks up. And the way Kafka works is a queue of events. If you cannot process a message, it doesn't go forward in processing the messages. And then you're, suddenly you are stuck and your, your whole system stops because you have like what we call a poison pill. So how do, I how do you avoid that? It's quite uh, actually simple. You apply a pattern uh, called dead letter queue and use other schemas to actually define a schema. So it's a strong typed. So now your messages have to comply on the producer side, we have a specific typing system, so you guarantee that the type is not going to go wrong for that specific topic, and then your consumers will not break for that case. And you can use a dead letter queue approach that if you start consuming a bit, a message and it's broken, instead of getting that cycle forever, you try a couple of times, if it doesn't work, you push that to a different queue and you go to the next message. And for that, you might need to use uh, offset committing manually. And I'm going to go through that and show some code because uh, there is a timer here. It's really scary. I have to go fast. Um, so think about this standard producer and consumer if you just use Kafka.js or any client that you, you, you decide to use. The normal producer and normal consumers, they don't have strong guarantees. What I mean by that, it doesn't guarantee to you that you're going to send a single message on the producer side. It might have dupl duplicates. It's what we call at least once. That's the guarantee, which means you can have duplicates. And in some systems, you cannot do that. If you're depositing money, you, cannot, you should not do that. Especially withdrawing money from a customer, you should not do that. And on the client side, you can also have duplicate pr processing. So the defaults, if you use, that's what you can get. 
there are solutions for that. So Kafka offers exactly one semantics, that's the EOS there, and transaction boundaries. And it's very common that you have a pattern like that, that you have a processor, a message that initiates as a process, you want to consume the message, do some processing with the message, and produce the message to another topic in a single transaction. So you want to make sure if you, when you consume, do processing, something goes wrong, um, you don't, uh, if you reprocess or restart your system, that you process that message again because you didn't finalize those three steps, which is sending that message to the next step. And for, for this, you have to do some configuration in Kafka. And uh, from the producer side, you have to set I dependence to true. That guarantees that you, it's not going to be duplicated and sent. And the, on the consumer side, you have to disable the auto commit offset, which means your client reads the message, but now you have the control. If I, when you want to tell Kafka, I really process this message and you commit back the offset. And you want to actually uh, set one property called uh, uh, max in-flight request to one, so you don't have parallel processing and you can keep, uh, keep the ordering guarantees. And on the producer side, on the last step, remember it's consuming uh, and then producing, and you want all this to be in the same transaction. What you want to say, set is a transaction ID, so the broker can uh, uh, set the transaction boundaries and uh, say I depend is true as well. And what this guarantees is that when you consume, process, and send, it's part of a single atomic transaction. Kafka uh, client, this is not a distributed transaction, like XA transaction. It's not guarantees if you do a database call on the side that that will be rolled back. You have to take care of that. It's on the boundaries of Kafka. It's the same as your normal database transaction between two tables that you are used to. So just keep that in mind. Uh, some configurations on the cluster, and I'm also done because my, my, my clock is red, blinking already. Uh, you should have at least three partitions and at least two in-sync replicas for your topics for this to work. So if you try locally and you don't have it, uh, it will not work. And you also have to start a transaction like you can see that. Start a transaction, send the message, send the offsets, and then commit the transactions, which means everything is going to happen or it will be rolled back. And that's basically what you want to do. And it's, it's really important that you take care of that. That's it. Uh, if you want to know more about this, I write in this, uh, uh, in this specific blog post about this. And uh, I also have Docker Compose, where you have multiple Kafka, cluster, uh, Kafka nodes, where you can play with this type of adva more advanced uh, work uh, in your local machine. Thank you very much.